Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Harvest Moon Winds of Anthos Animal Avalanche DLC pack. We're going to start by looking at all the different content that this pack gives you. Then I'm going to show you where to find all the different animals. And then at the end, I'm just going to do a little review. Do I think that this pack is worth $3? In this Animal Avalanche pack, you get 10 different animals. You get a panda, Asian small clawed otter, Akita, an orange velociraptor, a pink unicorn, a white unicorn. Then there are four Sasquatches. There's also a little bit of a story about finding the Sasquatch, but yeah, there's just a couple new quests and then you go and take a picture. So there are a few scenes that are added when you have the DLC, but yeah, there's not really that many. You also get two additional achievements that you can work towards unlocking. Let's look at all the different animals, where to find them, and then what their special ability is. The first one is a panda, and you can find the panda right here. It's south of the River of Blessing Middle Basin, and you can find him in the daytime. Um, of all of the animals, I would say this is the lamest. His special ability is that you get a slightly longer time effect when you eat some food. So let's move right along and look at the second animal, which is the Akita. Now, the Akita, it is just a reskin of a dog. And so if you get the Akita, then petting it is going to restore a bit of stamina. The next animal is the Asian Small Clawed Otter. And this one, it can be found at the beach in Lilikala. This one is going to retrieve shellfish from time to time. Now, this one is kind of unique because none of the animals in the base game are going to give you shellfish. Those three animals, you can find them in multiple places on the map. But these next seven are unique meaning that there's only one of them in the entire world. Also, these last seven, they all have pretty strong abilities, and you can only get most of them in the late game. Next, there is a unicorn and a pink unicorn. The unicorn, it can be found at the Harvest Goddess Spring at nighttime. You can see it right here. And the pink unicorn, you can find it at the Oasis. And this one, you can also only find it at nighttime. They don't come out until 7 p.m., so if you want to get this one, you're going to have to stay up late. Now, the unicorn and the pink unicorn, they're both very fast. They're double the speed of regular mounts, and they're going to ignore different weather conditions. So you can take your unicorn or your pink unicorn anywhere very quickly. The next DLC animal is the orange velociraptor. Now this one is just a recolor of the blue velociraptor from the main game, but this time it's orange and it's in a little bit easier place to get. You can get it just north of the raindrop pond and this one it only appears during the day. This one, it also has double speed. It's going to ignore weather conditions and it makes it a little bit easier to make friends. And the last set of animals are the Sasquatches. Now, there are four different Sasquatches, and they can all be found in different cities or just outside the four different cities. And all of these are going to appear during the day. They are all mounts, and they're going to give you double speed. And then each of them also has a special ability in addition to that. One of them is going to help spring crops, one of them is going to help summer crops, one of them is going to help fall crops, and then the last one is going to help winter crops. The first one is the Zimograd Sasquatch. If you already have this teleport station unlocked, then you can just teleport there and go find this one very easily. It might be a little bit difficult for you if you've never been here because there's a certain area that closes off during certain seasons, so be careful of that. However, I would say that this is probably the easiest one to get because there's not really any requirements of how to get there. The second Sasquatch is the Lectonberry Sasquatch. And this one, it's a little bit difficult to find if you haven't been here before, but to get this one, you're gonna have to go to the Crescent Moon Falls. Once you have this teleport point unlocked, it's pretty easy to get to him from there. These first two, they're both located very close to teleport points, so they're not really that difficult to get to at all. Then all you have to do is talk to them every day, maybe give them a gift, and you can quickly tame them. These last two Sasquatches are going to be a little bit more difficult, and you're not going to be able to get them till a bit later in the game. Next, let's look at the Lily Kala Sasquatch. And me personally, this is my least favorite one to get to because you're going to have to teleport to the volcano and then find your way out of the volcano every time that you want to go pet him. Even if you know the way, it's still probably going to be the furthest distance that you're going to have to travel from a teleport point to the Sasquatch. The last one is the Herbsburg Sasquatch. 
And this one, I guess technically you could get it fairly early on, but it's a little bit difficult because you have to repair not one, not two, but three bridges just to get to him. Then, once you've done all the work of building those three bridges, you're still going to have to travel a long way from the teleport point to the Sasquatch. This Sasquatch is a mount, however, I would say it's slightly inferior to the Unicorn because the Unicorn is very thin and so it's very easy to get around when you're riding on the Unicorns. However, when you're riding around on the Sasquatch, it's a little bit difficult because his body is a little bit bigger and so it's kind of difficult for him to maneuver around certain obstacles. What are my final thoughts on the Animal Avalanche DLC pack? Well, I have to say that I actually enjoyed this DLC a bit more than I was expecting to. I thought that this would just be a few reskins, um, you know, just to make a few of the animals that are in the base game a little bit more exotic. But it actually has a decent bit of content because some of the animals have different abilities and it's kind of difficult to get to some of the locations. So there's also a little bit of a challenge in that sense. There are also two achievements for people who like achievements, but honestly, both of those achievements, they're pretty easy. All you have to do is catch all the different new animals. There is also a little bit of storyline, but yeah, there's just a couple of short scenes that are added. So please let me know in the comments down below. Did you buy the DLC pack? Why or why not? And if you did buy it, are you enjoying it? Do you think it was worth however much you spent for it? For me personally, I got the DLC pass, so I will be showing you guys what's in each wave as it comes out. In case you didn't know, the DLC pass, it's split into four waves. This first wave was the Animal Avalanche pack. The next pack is going to be a pack that has two new marriage candidates and also a new outfit for your character to wear. And then the last two are just going to add additional content such as tools and crops and things like that. Don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you guys next time.